after studying this module you shall be able to know what is autopsy and its various types understand the objectives of autopsy that is post mortem examination the application of digital radiological techniques in the forensic medicine especially in this uh, era of advancement and what are the guidelines for conducting a medico legal autopsy the broad heading of this topic is the forensic pathology basically In order to find out the exact cause of death and thereby do justice to the dead, a thorough and meticulous autopsy is essentially needed. Only a systematic step-by-step -step approach to the procedure can give a satisfactory output and helps in concluding the exact cause of death. The term autopsy has been derived from Greek word autopsia which means seeing by one's own eyes that is auto and cis. The autopsy is also synonymously called as necropsy or thanatopsy or sexio cadaveris or the post-mortem examination is examination of a person's body after death with a view to search primarily for the cause of death. Autopsy for the said purpose has been recorded in history and dates back since the period of before Christ. Records of Roman times narrate examination of the wounds of Julius Caesar in 44 BC by his physician Antistesius. In that context, he opined that out of 23 injuries sustained over his body, only one injury over the chest was fatal. Then in year 1302, Bartolomeo di Varigana along with two physicians and three surgeons carried out the first medical legal autopsy. This was done by order of court of Bologna over the dead body of one Azzolino who died under suspicious circumstances and it was suspected to be a case of poisoning. Some authors also mention that in 1589 it was Dr. Ambrose Pear who did the first systemic autopsy on the body of King Henry II. In India, the first medical legal autopsy was done by Dr. Buckley on August 1693 at Madras over a case of death due to alleged arsenic poisoning. A complete autopsy exploring all the body cavities is necessary to substantiate the truth and to collect all necessary evidences. An incomplete and poor autopsy is worse than doing no autopsy at all. The autopsy should be done entirely by the doctor and no portion of it should be left upon the mortuary attendant. The attendant only should help the doctor in preparing the body for autopsy and other such works like sawing a skull cap etc. Coming on to the objectives of autopsy or post-mortem examination. The objectives of medical legal autopsy are to find out the exact cause of death whether natural or unnatural. This includes exact description and recording of all the evidences, injuries and whether death was due to any violence or poisoning. To note down all the injuries both external and internal including any possible malformations, deformities or disease. To find out how the injuries occurred and what is the possible weapon of offence. To find out the exact manner of death, whether suicidal, accidental or homicidal. To find out the time since death. To find out the position of the body at the time of death if possible. In case of an unknown body, to establish the identity of the person as well. Then the collection of physical evidence at wherever stage necessity arises for the sake of the case and handing over the same to the investigating officer after proper sealing. Then the aim of the autopsy is also to retain relevant viscera and tissues whenever necessity arises and handing over the same to the IO after proper sealing. Then in cases of post-mortem examination of infants, apart from all these what I mentioned earlier, it is necessary to establish the viability of the infant and if the infant was live born then to find out the period of survival and cause of death. Now let's see what are the various types of autopsy. One where we are concerned most of the times it is the medical legal autopsy. A medical legal autopsy is conducted only on the request of a legal authority 
responsible for the investigation of the sudden suspicious and unnatural death in india such authority may represent a police officer not below the level of a sub inspector or a magistrate in case of a medical legal autopsy often the history is sketchy doubtful or misleading and in some cases identity also may not be known the consent of the next of kin is not required in case of a medical legal autopsy and requisition from the legal authority is sufficient to conduct post mortem examination the autopsy surgeon has to determine cause of death time since death whether there are any apparent inconsistencies between the scene of crime and the actual findings and if needed has to visit the crime scene as well he has to carry out a very meticulous external internal examination to conclude the cause of death and if possible to determine the manner of death and also to deduce what can be the possible weapon of offense involved in the whole fiasco then the other type of autopsy is the pathological autopsy or the clinical autopsy this is done on death due to natural causes in order to know the exact cause of death or in order to reconfirm the diagnosis made by the physician the consent of the next of kin is essentially required in order to go ahead in this case and the law enforcing authorities requisition is not needed the hospital pathologist has access to all the relevant information regarding the patient that is case history medical records etc his main aim is to find any morphologic changes which will explain the sign and symptoms of the existing disease and the effectiveness of the treatment this helps in determining the cause of death extent of natural disease comorbidities or any previous unrecognized disease condition a pathological autopsy is generally research oriented then the third type of autopsy is the psychological autopsy the psychological autopsy is not an autopsy in a true sense rather it refers to the perusal of all the corroborative documents like medical history personal history relating to the victim and thorough history taking from the relative of the deceased in order to arrive to the motive of the act then as in the recent advances recently we have got the virtual autopsy or the vertopsy nowadays this is in phase of more popular in european countries so called developed countries forensic medicine and radiology departments of the university of burns institute germany as well as the uh, switzerland they have combined the various forms of latest imaginary technologies with forensic science to provide bloodless minimum invasive method for accidental and homicidal death then there is endoscopic autopsy it has been suggested by some authors that if conventional autopsy is difficult to undertake due to some unavoidable circumstances then post mortem endoscopic examination can be performed by using trocar and telescopic device along with a video camera which is termed as endoscopic autopsy in current indian scenario there are serious limitations in its practical implication though when coming on to the application of digital radiological techniques in forensic medicine we can have the application of multi slice ct mri three dimensional techniques then geometric presentation of the body surface detection of biochemical profile measurement by mr spectroscopy the various post processing techniques can provide a strong forensic evidence in the court of law the mri has a greater impact in demonstrating soft tissue injuries organ trauma and other non traumatic conditions the ct scan is the imaging modality of choice for both two dimensional and three dimensional documentation including post mortem diagnosis of subcutaneous emphysema air embolism however the difference between the findings of anti mortem and post mortem examination are not well studied in many cultures due to religious and sentimental values autopsies are always been interrupted or strongly resisted by the kins of the deceased so autopsy if being into put into regular practice definitely is going to change this perspective however at this moment autopsy doesn't seem to be cause effective and because of the fact that it is not well studied practical application seem to be a far fetched idea in the present circumstances especially in our country then let's see what are the guidelines for conducting a medical legal autopsy 
every registered medical practitioner working in a government setup is legally obliged to conduct an autopsy whenever he is being served with inquest papers. He has to conduct the autopsy as early as possible and no fees should be charged for the same. In India, authorization for medical legal autopsy is given by investigating police officer not below the rank of sub-inspector. However, head constable can also give authorization in rare exceptions where no police authority at the level of sub-inspectors is being posted. An executive magistrate can also give authorization for the same. Without such requisition from appropriate authority, medical legal autopsy should not be carried forward. Consent from the deceased relatives is absolutely not required for conducting medical legal autopsy. The following magistrates are empowered to hold an inquest like district magistrate, subdivision magistrate or any other executive magistrate especially empowered for this purpose by the state government. Whenever a body is sent for an autopsy, it must always be accompanied by inquest paper and a dead body chalan. A dead body chalan is the formal requisition submitted to the medical officer or doctor by the investigating police officer for performing the autopsy. A dead body chalan contains the name, age, sex, address, religion, etc. of the deceased. Also, it contains information regarding time and location of the recovery of the dead body, distance from the site to the mortuary and how the body has been transported and at what time it has been transported. It also bears name and address of the investigating police officer and relatives of the deceased. The time of receipt of the dead body also has to be filled in, in the dead body chalan. An inquest paper or the panchanama or the preliminary investigation report which is submitted by the investigating police officer. An inquest report describes the available history of the case, the time and place of recovery of the dead body, detailing the exact location of the dead body, the external appearance of the dead body involving his clothing, position of the body at the time of recovery, whether any injury present over the body or not, or in case of hanging, description of ligature mark, or any such external findings present over the dead body. A provisional opinion of the police officer is also entered in the inquest and signature for minimum two respectable members which are called as panchas of the locality are taken. Ideally, autopsy is performed in a well-equipped mortuary and in sufficient light equivalent to broad daylight but sometimes depending upon the circumstances it can also be performed at the site without further delay. For example, in cases where the body is severely decomposed and unable to transfer, say in mass disasters or in exhumation cases. A requisition from the magistrate is required in that context. The hospital records and the treatment records should be made available to the autopsy surgeon at the time of conducting post-mortem examination. If the hospital records are not available, then it is the duty of the concerned IO to make them available to the concerned autopsy surgeon. Availability of such records helps the doctor to avoid future manipulations, especially in the negligence cases as well, as well as to understand what has happened to the person immediately prior to his death, if he is being hospitalized, is being treated. The body should be properly identified by the IO as well as the relatives before starting the autopsy. In case of unknown and unclaimed dead bodies, Photographs and fingerprints of the deceased are to be preserved by the police and same to be circulated all over the media and communication services for possible chances of identification. The relevant history, medical records, inquest, panchnama, everything should be scrutinized properly by the medical officer before beginning the autopsy. But communication with the relatives should be kept as minimum as possible in order to avoid possible misinterpretation of facts and biasness. All the persons present during autopsy should be listed and names to be duly mentioned with signatures in the autopsy report. All the injuries mentioned in the inquest paper should be re-verified during the post-mortem examination. Sometimes a misinterpretation may be due to the police officials lack of knowledge regarding the injury. Maximum of the cases, a single registered medical practitioner in a government setup is sufficient to write autopsy report. In deaths within seven years of marriage, they are the dowry deaths, there the two RMPs are required to conduct the autopsy 
minimum of two doctors are required and also sign the concerned postmortem report. In some states of India, even alleged murder cases or medical negligence cases, two autopsy surgeons conduct the postmortem examination and duly sign the report so as not to lead into controversy and to keep things neutral. Then video recording. As per recommendations of the National Human Rights Commission, in all custodial deaths, autopsy has to be conducted under videography and with due requisition from magistrate to avoid any possible controversy arising later on. In India, crime scene visit is not done regularly by the autopsy surgeons. Rather, scientists from forensic science laboratories, they conduct the crime scene visit. But if need arises, depending upon the merit of the case, examination of the crime scene should be done by the doctor or the team of doctors associated with the case concerned, which is of immense help in understanding the circumstances of death as well as many related issues. Then embalming, if needed, should always be done after conclusion of the autopsy or else the embalming fluid will destroy important evidence and toxicological samples. A medical legal autopsy should be complete and meticulous. An incomplete or partial autopsy is next to conducting no autopsy at all. The careful observation and useful utilization of all the acts are to be taken into consideration to reach a conclusion. And ideally, the postmortem report is to be submitted within 24 hours of conducting the autopsy, the postmortem examination. To summarize this topic, the term autopsy has been derived from Greek word autopsia which means seeing by one's own eyes, the auto and opsis. A complete autopsy exploring all the body cavities is necessary to substantiate the truth and to collect all necessary evidence. A medical legal autopsy is conducted only on the request of a legal authority responsible for the investigation of the sudden, suspicious and unnatural death. Nowadays, virtual autopsy is becoming more popular in European countries. Various post-processing techniques can provide a strong forensic evidence in the court of law. In India, authorization for medical legal autopsy is given by investigating police officer not below the rank of sub-inspector. However, in the cases of custodial death and wherever there is any controversy under the magistrate inquest, the authorization can be done. By, can be given by an executive magistrate. The relevant history, medical records, inquest, panchanama, everything should be scrutinized properly by the medical officers before starting the autopsy. Embalming, if needed, should always be done after conclusion of the autopsy.